Almost 50 years after her memorable speech and the reactions she received for speaking and sharing a very truthful and powerful message, Sachin Littlefeather has finally received an apology from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences for the abuse she faced and endured over her 1973 Oscar speech. The actor and activist took the stage on Marlon Brando's behalf after he was awarded Best Actor for his portrayal of Vito Corleone in The Godfather. She said in an interview that Marlon contacted her before the event and asked if she would go up and represent him at the Academy Awards, as it would be an opportunity to explain to people about the stereotypes of Native Americans in films, and also because of the Indian occupation of Wounded Knee in South Dakota. When the 45th Academy Awards ceremony was about to start at 6 o'clock in the evening and the red carpet was rolled out before that, Sachin was ready with her speech paper and had dressed up in her traditional Indian regalia and was going to join the ceremony, but was approached by the show's producer who took her speech away from her and warned her very sternly that she will only have 60 seconds or less on the stage and if she takes any longer, he will have her arrested and put in handcuffs. Howard Koch, he's the producer of the show, had previously told me he said, if you read this speech, I will have you arrested. I will have you taken away in handcuffs. I will embarrass you. I will embarrass Marlon Brando. But he had no real idea that I was going to refuse that Academy Award. When Marlon Brando's name was announced for Best Actor, Littlefeather went up to the stage on his behalf. In her powerful speech, Sachin rejected the award as part of Brando's protest of Hollywood's depictions of Native American people. The gesture also intended to highlight the events at Wounded Knee in South Dakota, where a massacre of Native Americans took place in 1890, and protests were ongoing. Hello, my name is Sachin Littlefeather. I'm Apache, and I'm president of the National Native American Affirmative Image Committee. I'm representing Marlon Brando this evening, and he has asked me to tell you in a very long speech, which I cannot share with you presently because of time, but I will be glad to share with the press afterwards that he very regretfully cannot accept this very generous award. And the reasons for this being are the treatment of American Indians today by the film industry Excuse me. And on television, in movie reruns, and also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I beg at this time that I have not intruded upon this evening, and that we will, in the future, our hearts and our understandings will meet with love and generosity. Thank you on behalf of Marlon Brando. At that moment, we could see her speech was met with applause, but equally there were boos and mockery voices from the audience. Sachin, however, maintained her calm composure, which showed the level of respect she had and resilience in the face of disgruntled, self-centered, and racist reactions. Sachin stated that following the ceremony and her speech, she faced a lot of criticism from the media, from people saying that she wasn't Indian and that she rented her dress to wear at the event, to many death threats she received as well. During Sachin's presentation, a certain actor was more furious with her speech that he literally tried to force her off the stage before being stopped and restrained by six security men. That actor was John Wayne. Marty Passetta, who was tasked with directing the Oscars broadcast between 1972 and 1988, stated that people should have seen what was going on backstage. In his 1988 interview with the Chicago Tribune, he said, We had a fight is what we had. John Wayne wanted to go out there and physically yank her off the stage. It took six men to hold him back. Now, John Wayne was quite known for his discriminatory and racist views in a number of situations and interviews when it comes to racial topics and issues. In an interview with Playboy magazine in 1971, when discussing some racial situations between between black and white people at the time, he said, we can't all of a sudden get down on our knees and turn everything over to the leadership of the blacks. I believe in white supremacy until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility. I don't believe in giving authority and positions of leadership and judgment to irresponsible people. And in the same interview when he was asked about Native Americans in his films and what he feels about them, he said, I don't feel we did wrong in taking this great country away from them. Our so-called stealing of this country from them was just a matter of survival. There were great numbers of people who needed new land and the Indians were selfishly trying to keep it for themselves. Following the night of the Oscars, Wayne discussed the altercation and claimed that if Brando had, quote, something to say, he should have appeared that night and stated his views instead of taking some little unknown girl and dressing her up in an Indian outfit. 
But Brando stood by his decision following the ceremony. In an interview with talk show host Dick Cavett, he said, I was distressed that people should have booed and whistled and stomped, even though perhaps he was directed at myself. They should have at least had the courtesy to listen to her. Brando continued in the same interview to highlight the issues and importance of depicting racial minority groups in movies and how it is essential to show the realities and cultures of any groups in films, especially when it is seen from the perspective of those people that are portrayed. Clint Eastwood also made a joke following Sachin's speech mocking her message. I don't know if I should present this award on behalf of all the cowboys shot in all the John Ford westerns over the years. <laughs> the, uh... Sachin Littlefeather had starred in films such as The Laughing Policeman, The Trial of Billy Jack, and Johnny Firecloud. But after rejecting Brando's Oscar, she was essentially blacklisted from the entertainment industry, which subsequently ended her Hollywood career. And after appearing in Shoot the Sun Down in 1978, Littlefeather didn't act in an on-screen project again. Later on, she featured in the documentary Real Injun in 2009, before next appearing as herself in the 2018 short documentary Sachin Breaking the Silence. Now, almost 50 years after the event, the board behind the Academy Award has issued an apology to Little Feather, with a letter sent by the then Academy President David Rubin in which he said, The abuse you endured because of this statement was unwarranted and unjustified. The emotional burden you have lived through and the cost to your own career in our industry are irreparable. For too long the courage you showed has been unacknowledged. For this we offer both our deepest apologies and our sincere admiration. The letter was dated June 18th and will be read in full at an event honoring Little Feather at the Academy Museum on September 17th, 2022. In response to the apology, Sachin expressed her happiness in the fact that her mistreatment was acknowledged after almost five decades, saying, Regarding the Academy's apology to me, we Indians are very patient people. It's only been 50 years. We need to keep our sense of humor about this at all times. It's our method of survival. I never thought I'd live to see the day. This is a dream come true. It is profoundly heartening to see how much has changed since I did not accept the Academy Award 50 years ago. I am so proud of each and every person who will appear on stage. The level of patience and resilience Sachin has showed in the ceremony almost 50 years ago will always be remembered as one of the most powerful moments in the movie and entertainment industry for the world to learn from. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and share your thoughts in the comments below about this incident. And until I see you all in the next video, thank you very much for watching, have a splendid day and peace out.